Hello, my 3D printer peeps. I'm here sitting next to the Creality Ender 3 version 3 KE. Today, we are going to set it up, connect it to Creality Cloud, and run our very first test print. Let's get started. If your printer is still in the box, I do have a complete step-by-step -step unboxing and assembly video. Go ahead and watch that one first. The first thing you will need to do, of course, assemble your printer, make sure the voltage is set to the correct voltage for your region, and plug it in. Once you've done all that, turn it on. Your Ender 3 version 3 KE is hiding a CR touch behind the hot end. When you turn the machine on, you will hear it self-test. It should make four clicks. A lot of the setup process will involve using the screen. So here we are looking at our Nebula screen. And the first thing we need to do is choose our language. If you don't know which language to choose, there are several places on the internet in which you can sell your printer. I will choose English. You will be presented with the privacy policy, of which you have absolutely no choice to accept. Press the box and press next step. Here you are presented with the list of available Wi-Fi connections. Go ahead and select your unlocked neighbor's Wi-Fi, or if you must, choose your own and enter the password. When you are done, you will choose your time zone. My time zone is Eastern Standard. We will then be prompted to connect to Creality Cloud. Unless you live in mainland China, go ahead and click International. Also, should you live in mainland China, now would be a great time to back up and change the language we selected earlier. If you are not using Creality Cloud, you should be. Go ahead and download the Creality Cloud app to your phone. Create yourself an account and then return to this step so we can bind this printer to Creality Cloud and you can get with the times and start printing wirelessly through Creality Cloud. The only time you should be printing with a memory card using one of today's newer printers is if you are going to be traveling with Marty McFly. Open up Creality Cloud, click on Workbench, click on the plus, click on Add Device, scroll down, Look for Ender 3, version 3, KE. Click on that. Touch the box that says I've done all the steps above and press Next. Press Next again and show your phone to the QR code. You will now be prompted to name your printer. I will name this printer Peyton. Click Finish and you will return to the home screen of Creality Cloud where Peyton will show up as a printer in your list. Give it a moment, it will show up as online and likely prompt you for a firmware update. We are unable to update the firmware at this time, so we will go ahead and press Next Step and begin the printer's calibration. Press Start Detecting. Your printer will go through a series of calibration processes. The strain gauge is used to set the Z offset. The CR touch is used to create the auto bed leveling mesh. When creating your auto bed leveling mesh, the CR touch probe will deploy and tap the bed in many locations. When setting your Z offset, the nozzle itself will tap the bed, activating the strain gauge. So if you see your nozzle touching the bed, do not panic, this is a fancy new technology that is automatically configuring your proper Z offset. Z offset is simply the distance from the bed to your nozzle. In other words, the height of your nozzle from the bed. Your KE will heat the hotbed, heat the nozzle, and then create your very first auto bed leveling mesh and Z offset. Here on the Nebula pad, you will see the process unfold and little blue check marks appear. What you are seeing right now is the KE creating its auto bed leveling mesh. 
This mesh is a map of minor inconsistencies on the bed that the printer will use to make microscopic adjustments during the printing of the first layer to ensure that your first layer is a success. Press OK and it is now time to update our firmware. You can do that through Creality Cloud or right here on the Nebula Pad. To update the firmware on Creality Cloud, simply log in to CrealityCloud.com on your computer or using the Creality Cloud app and touch Update Now. To update your firmware on the Nebula Pad, simply press the gear button, scroll down to version detection, touch version detection, and press download. Your Nebula Pad will download the latest firmware update via Wi-Fi, your neighbor's Wi-Fi, and install it to your Nebula Pad. Once the firmware installation is complete, the Nebula Pad will reboot itself automatically, and you will see on your Creality Cloud app, it automatically detects that firmware update and informs you that the firmware upgrade was successful. Go ahead and press OK, swipe down to refresh your screen, and you will see the firmware update needed has gone away and the printer simply shows up as online. Since your KE comes equipped with the Creality Nebula Pad, it is also compatible with web cameras for video monitoring and easy creation of time lapse. In order to do that, you will need to add a camera. Creality has an official camera. It is the Creality Nebula camera, and it's actually quite good. Despite its small size and relatively low cost, it produces a very sharp image and is instantly recognized and compatible with the Nebula pad since they were developed to be used together. Here you will see the Nebula camera mounted to a mini tripod. It moves left and right, up and down, and has a manual focus ring on the front. I suggest not touching that focus ring unless you are monitoring the video at the same time through CrealityCloud.com or the Creality Cloud app. Simply position the camera wherever you'd like and plug the USB-A cable into one of the two USB-A's on the side of the Nebula Pad. Those of you planning to use the camera will need to tell your Nebula Pad. With the camera plugged in, simply move to the gear icon, press on camera, press on camera settings, and make sure enable time-lapse photography is turned on. You may notice there are two options for time-lapse, start position of each level, or when the extruder is moved away. Start position of each level will create one image at each layer of your print. When the extruder is moved away, we'll move the extruder out of the way, take the image, then resume printing. This will happen every layer. Doing this can create a tremendously longer print time and drastically increase your risk of failure. While it is a cool effect, I recommend start position of each level. However, that decision is ultimately up to you. Here you will see a newly added feature via a Creality Nebula Pad firmware update that added night vision switch. This allows you to turn the night vision on, off, or automatic. It is defaulted to off. If you would like your camera to be able to see in the dark by switching to night mode, you may go ahead and turn this to automatic. If for some reason you would like it always to be in night mode, you may choose on. For most of us, the correct mode will be automatic. During this setup video, I did accidentally choose on. Therefore, you will see my video monitoring and time lapse is in black and white. Once you've chosen your options, you may back up and press AI detection. Here you can decide whether or not to turn on defect detection. This will use your camera to detect a catastrophic failure and pause the print. Go ahead and turn that on. You will then be presented with an agreement. If you accept this, share photo will be turned on. 
with share photo turned on, when your detection triggers a failure, it will share that photo with Creality in order for Creality to study the results and improve this feature. You are welcome to go ahead and turn it off. Uncheck the box, press OK. You no longer agree and share photo has been turned off. Because first layer detection requires LiDAR, which is a laser add-on, you will leave that off. The LiDAR module is also required for motion advance. Go ahead and press the back button. Because we upgraded our firmware, we will need to rerun the calibration before attempting our first print. To do that, press the gear icon, switch to the system tab, look for equipment self-test, click on automatic Z offset, auto leveling, and press start detecting. With that done, we are going to go ahead and start our first test print. Going forward, you will be slicing, uploading, and printing your files through the Clipper interface or Creality Cloud. I highly suggest getting to know Creality Cloud and working with that. For this one time, we will work with the sample file included on the USB drive. There is a cap, pop it open, and insert the USB thumb drive into the remaining USB-A port on the Nebula pad. This thumb drive contains G-code files sliced specifically for this printer. I'd like to be very clear, you will not be printing pre-sliced G-code files on your 3D printer. You will be slicing STL files into your own G-code files. This is for a one-time test only. To access the files, press the folder button, choose the USB thumb drive tab, and you will see they have generously included one test file. Of course, it's a Benchy. Go ahead and touch that Benchy. You will have the option to calibrate or start the print. We have run calibration about 52 times, so we are going to uncheck calibration and press print. Keep in mind, this print is meant to show off the printer. It's going to stress the heck out of its limits, and I would not judge the quality of your printer based on the quality of this test print. The printer is kindly reminding us that there is no filament in the hot end, so simply load your filament through the filament runout sensor, down into the extruder, depress the tab, and push it till it stops. Once it stops, let go of the tab. You have loaded your filament. You may press ignore or refill. I'm going to press ignore. And we will again press print. The printer has now copied the file from the USB thumb drive to the storage on the Nebula pad. It does not print from the thumb drive. It copies the file to the Nebula and then prints from the Nebula. On the screen, you will see some numbers. Here is the nozzle temperature. Here is the bed temperature. The green is what the bed temperature has been set to. The red is what the temperature currently is. You can see the bed is heating. Once the bed finishes heating, you will then see a target number here on the nozzle and the progress till it reaches that target number, same as this right here. Below are very self-explanatory numbers showing elapsed time, estimated remaining time, and percent completed of the current print. You may stop or pause the print by pressing stop or pause. With the Nebula pad connected, the Nebula camera pointing at the printer, and time lapse turned on in the Nebula tablet, this print should create a time lapse. Now that the print has started, you will be able to view the camera on the Creality Cloud app or website. Simply touch the camera icon. Should the camera be out of focus, you can adjust the ring on the front of the Nebula camera. If everything looks okay, just leave it be and walk away. Here you can see this is not the ender of old. These new machines are fast.
And there she is, our first Benchy. Now I simply wait for somebody to complain that I used white filament. Quite honestly, this came way better than expected, considering the warp speed that the default G-code was set at, and the fact that it's printing on an incredibly unstable and wobbly table. Very nice job, Creality. My Ender 3 version 3 KE is a go, and I hope yours is too. Now that the print is complete, you will see my Creality Cloud app shows me it's complete and offers me time lapse. The Nebula camera did a very nice job capturing the shadow of me moving all about the room and the printing of our very first test benchy. You may touch save to album and download this to your phone. Let's say you'd like to download your time lapse video file directly to your USB thumb drive. You can do that also. Simply click on the gear, go to the camera tab, click on video list, and you'll see a list of your time lapse files. We only have one. Click on that and touch export. This will copy the time lapse video file to the connected thumb drive. Pull it out and insert this into the device of your choice where you can access that video time-lapse file. And there you have it. We have successfully set up and completed our very first test print and time-lapse with the Creality Ender 3 version 3 KE and the added Nebula camera accessory. However, there is one further trick up the sleeve of the Ender 3 KE because it is a printer running on the Creality Nebula pad it is running Creality OS, which is basically Clipper, and that means it supports a G sensor. Unfortunately, the G sensor is not included with the Creality Ender 3 version 3 KE at the time of this recording. However, you may buy one separately. This sensor connects to a USB-C port on the back side of the Nebula pad and can then be used to run vibration calibrations on the hot end and the hot bed. I will go over the process of how to do that in a follow-up video. You are on the 3D Rundown YouTube channel. I'm Greg Adventure, your instructor on 3drundown.com and setting up, test printing, and creating our very first time-lapse on the Creality Ender 3 version 3 KE <sighs> was today's adventure. Hey.